you about this very important topic and that so many of you are interested in this important topic as well. I hope I made the presentation as relevant as possible for you um, so that you can really take away something from the presentation. So the, the focus of today is the human factor in digitalization and you as digital marketing students, you probably, when you think of human factor, you probably think of outside, um, the, the customer, right? Which is also an important human factor. But I would like to introduce you to a topic that is at least equally important and that is the human factor inside a company, the employees. And Professor Meitz said already some, some uh, uh, things about me. So uh, my name is Connie Amato Silic. I'm German, but my first husband was Italian, so that's where my first uh, last name comes from. And my current husband is Croatian. So, <laughs> so I'm collecting names. Um, uh, as already announced, <laughs> you can also join me here. international organizations uh, like Siemens, Nokia and also Opel. Uh, but uh, in the last year I, I also took care of small and medium-sized companies because they are quite laggards in times of or in, in terms of digitalization and also in terms of the human factor. So there is really great potential to improve there. <coughs> So the human factor is something that should not be neglected in, in, in any kind of process uh, where you, in organizations where you deal with change. And um, Richard Branson, an English uh, billionaire, he said, clients do not come first, employees come first. Mm -hmm. If you take care of your employees, they will take care of the clients. So you see here the employees and the employee engagement in, in anything that you do in an organization is really vital to the success of any activity. Now let's start with the, you probably know it, the uh, uh, hierarchy of needs of Maslow when we talk about the human factor. Everything that we do, we do to fulfill some kind of needs that we have, some kind of values that we follow. And uh, Maslow um, differentiated in different kinds of needs. So we have the basic needs, uh, physiological needs that you need to take care of first before you can go to higher levels um, of your needs. So like food, water, security. When you have taken care of those kind of needs, then you can go to the next level. And then the next level is a sense of belonging to a social group, relationships, love, um, feeling of accomplishment, uh, to have acknowledgement in the society. And when you have taken care of these needs, then you can go to the highest level of needs, and this is self-fulfillment. And when you apply this to employee engagement, you can also differentiate in these different levels. So at the beginning, at the very bottom, you have survival needs. You need enough compensation, the benefits are are located there. You need job security. You don't want to fear that you're losing your job. And when you have taken care of these kind of needs, then you can take care of the next one, the belonging of to uh, belonging to a team, belonging to a company, identified with it. But that's not enough yet to be really engaged. What makes you engaged normally in an organization is that you feel a sense of importance, that you know you make a contribution, that you are valued in the, in the team. And then the next level is self-actualization, which is uh, really the highest possible state of engagement that you can have. 
and only 15% of normal average employees reach this highest level, really being enthusiastic about the work, being totally engaged. And here you see a statistic that I brought you from uh, International Market Research, um, Gallup Engagement Index. They do it for the whole world, but I took out the German results. And, but they are quite similar in, uh, in the different countries. Um, you see here that the top 15% that are really engaged and the, the uh, rest of the 85%, uh, they are not engaged, not committed to their work. They don't identify with the company or with the targets of the company. So they are doing job as usual. And of these 85%, even 15%, are actively disengaged, they are unhappy with their work, they don't like their job, they don't get along with their, with their bosses and so on. So uh, they are really actively looking to, to get away from that situation. So overall the picture doesn't look so good. And when you go now um, to change management, um, we have yeah, the, the, the factor of, uh, of the employee engagement is, is really crucial. Now, I would like you to think, to think from your point of view. Why do you think employee engagement is so crucial? What do you think are the impacts if employee engagement is not there? If you have a staff that is not engaged, what do you think are, are the consequences for, for a company or, or for a team? Yeah, the company is not as productive and efficient as it could be if it doesn't use their full potential. Exactly, yes. Anything else? Um, if the employees are not satisfied, they are going to jump jobs and then uh, you'll, you'll have to find new people to train them and that it will take a lot of resources and time and it's not feasible or useful. Exactly, a huge cost factor as well. Anything else that comes to your mind? They are the touch points to the clients, mm -hmm. so if, I mean, they represent the company and they create. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they create the feeling that the clients have while interacting with the company. Right, bad reputation, bad image. <laughs> right. Anything else? The quality of services provided. Is yes. Useful? Yes, also hitting customer uh, satisfaction, customer engagement as well. And you are totally right. So you are already experts in the human factor. I, I put together some of, of what you just said. So when you're not engaged in the team, you have very low performance, creativity is very low, you do the minimum effort, only what is only necessary to do your job and uh, you have no commitment whatsoever to the organization. When you get a better offer, you're out. Uh, actively disengaged, they are even more dangerous to the team because they show their unhappiness in their words, in their attitude, in, in their actions. And uh, it's, it's kind of um, also sh uh, influencing the other team members. They undermine even performance of others. And um, this has, as you said, it has a direct impact on the quality of the work and of the services that you provide as a company. It has direct impact on the productivity. The profitability goes down, of course, because the costs explode when you have really disengaged employees. Uh, innovation goes down. I mean, in times of digitalization, in times of this competitive pressure, you need to be innovative. And what do you think, uh, Unengaged employees are creative and like to do innovation? No way. So that is a, a massive impact on a company's competitiveness. And as you said, customer satisfaction. This is um, the, the, the problem area that uh, is, is um, hit the, the fastest when you have disengaged people because it grows to the outside and then uh, your reputation as a company suffers extremely. Here, I want to show you that uh, human, the human factor is not or should not be seen as a cost factor, but it should be seen as a success factor in a company. And here it shows when you have disengaged or low engagement, 
in a company, um, that it has a, a direct impact. It's also a Gallup study, but there are numerous other studies that uh, prove the, the correlation, the strong correlation between engagement and the performance and the success of a company. Um, now, when we have change projects, when you want to introduce something new, you have a normal performance curve um, determined by your emotions, by the emo emotions of the employees that they are going through when, you, when they experience something new. And um, this change curve um, goes, goes down at the beginning, you see uh, a shock maybe at the beginning, oh no, it can't be true, something new again. Then it goes up because most of the employees, they deny first. Well, no, it's not true, it's just a humor, uh, it won't be uh, introduced as announced, let's see. And then, when they understand, okay, it's getting serious, I really have to deal with this, the performance goes down, until they go through the emotional acceptance, when they see, okay, there is no way out, I need to, I need to uh, deal with this, and I need to uh, uh, get familiar with this new thing, then um, they, they go through the valley of tears, so to speak. And then when they start exercising, when they get to know the new tool or whatever, um, the performance goes up. Usually um, it's correlated with qualifications, with trainings in the company, so the performance goes up again until they realize, okay, it's not that bad, I can cope with it, um, it's okay. And the, the end is that it's integrated in the normal work and that they take it for granted. So that's the new normal. And this change curve is when you introduce normal changes like new IT systems, new processes, you do a reorganization in the, in the company. You, you have to plan and, and, uh, and cope as a manager with this curve, with these emotions. And it's important that you as a, as a manager also deal with the emotions of your team. You need to recognize them and accept them and address them in the right way. Now, when we have digital change processes, the problem of these emotions is much more severe because, I mean, you are the digital natives. You probably, yeah, it's, it's probably, um, difficult for you to understand that people that are older or that are not so familiar with, with digital media, that they have really very strong emotions against it. That when they hear the word dif digitalization, many of them associate with it loss of job or something like this, right? So you really have to acknowledge that digitalization uh, has even um, yeah, massive resistance from the employees. They have fears, they don't have the skills that they need to deal with the new stuff. They have no awareness of the topic at all. Why is it important? Why should I join this? What's in it for me? Nothing, so I, won't, I, I don't want to join. And uh, lack of identification with the topic and a work overload as well. So something new again and I'm at anyway totally overloaded, so what's the deal here? And this is, this is the emotions, extreme emotions that you, that you face when you try to implement uh, digital processes or digital systems in the organization. But companies nowadays are forced to do it. It's not just something that you can sit out as a company and wait until it's over. Digitalization is a mega trend. And if you don't follow this trend, if you don't go with it, then you are out of the business in the next several years. So if they are forced to embrace digitalization and to, to, to change something in their company in that direction. So the strong driving forces are competitive pressure. Uh, I mean, the large international organizations, concerns, they are the, the driver of that. They are the front runner. They, they really 
are the fighters for the new technologies. But small and, and medium-sized companies, they are the followers, more or less, the, the laggards. They want, to, they want to see where the standards go. They want to see where the, the uh, large organizations go, and then they follow in that direction. So competitive pressure is one driving force. Uh, legal requirements is another. Cost savings is the most obvious uh, thing and then the most benefit for, uh, for the companies to start with digitalization, uh, especially in automation. You have a lot of, a lot of potential for cost savings. And more advanced companies, they found out, okay, we have also a really great opportunity here, a really great potential for sales, sales growth when we embrace new uh, business models. Um, so these are very common driving forces, but there is one main driver that I haven't mentioned yet. And what do you think is it? When we talk about the human factor and you're in digital marketing, it's the customer expectations. It's us, it's the consumers. We expect companies to be faster, to be cheaper, to be better. Uh, we want a more convenient service. It's us who is actually driving this, this whole development. And in the companies, we have various approaches how you can deal with digitalization. Um, of course, the interface to the customer is the most important um, area where, where you need to uh, digitalize and where you are expected to digitalize. Um, it's the outbound logistics. You want the, the, the goods uh, as fast as possible. It's marketing and sales. You want to have, as a consumer, the right channels to be addressed and services. Uh, but also operations, as I said, with, with automation and, and, uh, and, and that uh, is a, a, a good area for, um, for digitalization. Now, okay, it, it doesn't seem so complex now, right? You have the interfaces to the customers, you have potential within the company where you can cost save. Why is it still so difficult for companies? to deal with digital projects. It's because we live in a VUCA world. Have you ever heard of VUCA? VUCA is a summary, uh, um, a trend, trendy term, for four characteristics uh, that characterize our times now. Um, we have volatile times. I mean, 10, 20 years ago, um, we had a really steady development in the economy. Now we have changes up and down. Uh, it's very volatile, so you cannot really, uh, yeah, you cannot really project what is going to happen. Uh, we have a lot of uncertainty. As a manager, when you try to make decisions, you are not sure if it's the right or wrong decision. It's, it's very uncertain, the outcome. Uh, we have a very complex world. We are interconnected. The, uh, the units in, in the company, they are very um, intercorrelated and interdependent as well. So uh, you, don't have a very, you don't have a simple world that you can deal with. You have a complexity of unknown dimensions at the moment. And it won't get better. And you have ambiguity. Uh, it's, it's ambiguous. Um, if something new pops up, you don't immediately know, is it good, is it bad for the company, is it right, is it wrong? So you have to wait, you have to try out. And this VUCA world is very challenging for older generations, I have to say that. You have been born in a VUCA world, you are used to it. Uh, there is no steady business, there, you, you have to be flexible, you have to be agile. When something pops up, you have to... You have to be um, active and do something about it. Your, your career, you don't expect to be in a company for the next 10 or 20 years, like our parents did. Um, you, are, you are much more flexible now. But for, for the managers that are now in place, uh, Generation X and the baby boomers, they have much more problems with the VUCA world. 
So it's um, much more difficult for them to, to, to deal with change. And here you see the uh, 30 of the top brands and how they developed in the last, year, last 10 years. And you see here that 14 of these 30 top brands, they have already developed their companies into plat platform-based companies, where buyers, sellers, and third parties are all connected together. That was unthinkable 20 years ago. It was all secret. It was all in, in different units. And now we have platform-based companies. So it's a, a totally new approach how to do business. And what we need now is that, um, that we change our leadership mindset. Digitalization brings such radical changes with it that uh, managers and, and executives need to have a different thinking in their, uh, in their doing, in, in, uh, in their managing a company. And now I would like to do a, a small group work with you. Um, just a very short one, five minutes. Maybe you can split up in different groups, like four or five. How many are we? Five? Twenty. So let's say you go together in four and please discuss in your small group what you expect when you enter a company as an employee. What, what you expect from your manager. What is your preferred leadership style? How do you want to be led and managed by, by someone? So when you when you found your group, four, then we can stop the five minutes. Or you want to you want to stick together as one table here in five? You can also form the groups in the rows. That's also fine. As you like. Hello. Hello. Okay.